Every season, one player ends up getting cut that we didn't see coming. And on today's show, we're talking about who this year's surprise cut candidate could be and some other players' roster spots that could be on the line. You are Locked On Chargers, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Chargers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up and welcome into the Lockdown Chargers podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Wade, joined as always by my co-host, David Drogemeyer, and we've been covering the Chargers together now for seven seasons, but this is our fifth season as a host of the Lockdown Chargers podcast, bringing you your team every day. Thank you guys, as always, for making us your first listen today, and to make sure you never miss the show, go subscribe or follow for free on YouTube and listen wherever you get your podcast. David, what do we got today? It is the Locked On Chargers mailbag we're getting into, so that means we turn the show over to you. And, of course, you guys never disappoint with some great questions. Today we're going to get into who could be this year's surprise cut. Who's that guy that you're not expecting that might get his walking papers from the Chargers? Also, the importance of depth. Who is going to be this year's Jamari Sawyer? Who's going to be that guy that steps up when inevitably some attrition happens and some injuries take place? And also, we're going to tell you why the Chargers are again going to carry three quarterbacks. Yeah, even with the new rule, it doesn't mean you'll be seeing really a different roster construction more than likely for the Chargers who will probably carry three guys. And we'll get into that. But I do want to start with a good question that we did get from one of our faithful listeners because I think who we're going with is going to upset people because this is a guy I don't think people want to see cut or maybe even think could be on the roster bubble. But James Malia asks, Hi guys, I know it's early to predict the 53-man roster, but each year there's a surprise cut. Who do you think the surprise cut candidate could be? David, we talked about it, right? I mean, there's not very many starters or guys who have played significant snaps for the Chargers in years past. Like Kenneth Murray, it doesn't feel like there's enough there to push him for a roster spot, right? Even if he loses his starting spot. But one guy came to mind because of kind of the circumstances that he got on the Chargers this season, and it is Jalen Guyton, a speedster, really the Chargers' most traditional deep threat. But when you look at some of the factors, David, if you are talking about a guy that we're not going to see coming because they may, you know, went out of their way to go and re-sign him this offseason, it could be Jalen Guyton. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and again, and I agree with you that this is a guy that people are probably not going to want to hear about the potential of him getting cut. And and I understand it. I mean, I, I really, really do. But when you're looking at this Chargers roster and you're looking at guys that could potentially be in that situation, I think there's a couple of reasons why Jalen Guyton is one of the guys that come to mind. And I think the biggest reason for me is just the injury concern. Obviously, Jalen Guyton is coming off of a torn ACL. That is a major reason. And we don't know where he's at in his development. I mean, he is still rehabbing. We don't know where he's going to be at. And obviously, when you have an ACL injury, it's something to do with your legs. And Jalen Guyton's bread and butter in this business is all about speed. So how he is able to bounce back and recover from that injury is going to be a major determining factor on if he's going to be able to make the team this year for the Bolts. And that's why it's nice to do this early right now, and then we can revisit it later just because there's going to be nicks and bumps and bruises and other things that end up potentially putting some other guys' roster spots on the line as training camp goes forward, as we see these guys actually get out on the field. And, of course, as guys start to get nicked up, as they always do, he is definitely one of those. I think the other factors you look at are this. Since Brandon Staley's taken over, the Chargers in both seasons have only kept five wide receivers on their opening day roster, right? In the initial 53-man roster, they've kept five receivers both times. I mean, a couple years ago, Jalen Guyton went in in 2021 as wide receiver three on that roster. Right now, he's wide receiver five or six because the other thing is is they re-signed Jalen Guyton before they had a chance to draft Quentin Johnston and Darius Davis. Both guys fill different needs for the Chargers, but this is the other thing. If he is your sixth receiver, right, which we don't even know if they'll keep six, He's not a gadget player offensively. They've tried him in that role. It doesn't work. That's not his game. He might get a late start due to injury like you just talked about. He doesn't play on special teams. And last year in a different offense was kind of phased out even before the injury in week three. We didn't really see him much in weeks one and two. So those are all the reasons it feels like it could be possible. Realistic, probable, I wouldn't go that far. But it seems like it might be on the table. But you just have to hope, David, that it doesn't happen. Because I think for me, 
The Chargers need to learn from the mistakes that really hurt them in the backstretch of last season with what their wide receiver core looked like in that playoff game. Yeah, and also not even just in the playoff game, but throughout the season as well. You had Jason Moore Jr. playing in multiple games for you last year. Michael Bandy. You had Michael yeah, Bandy playing multiple games for you and important snaps for you last year. You had to thrust... Uh, you know, Joshua Palmer into your starting, you know, being your number one wide receiver multiple times throughout DeAndre the season. Carter. Yeah. yeah, DeAndre Carter got way more offensive snaps than the Chargers ever envisioned him having when they brought him in to be your, the primary punt returner, kick returner. But that's what happens. And so the Chargers can't possibly look at that situation last year. And also, you know, just what Jalen Guyton lacked and his and what happened in his absence and how clear it was that there was nobody else on the roster that brings to the table what he does. And yeah. that is that straight up speed and production and chemistry with the quarterback. We're talking six receptions of 20 plus yards and three touchdowns for Jalen Guyton. He is a machine. This is what he Over does. Over how long? Right. Over the course of the of the, the last couple of seasons, sure. last two seasons, um, you know, that he was not injured. But yeah. that's what Jalen Guyton does. I mean, he, he has five touchdowns of 20 plus yards since 2020. Sorry, he missed all of the 2022 season, basically, you know, spare a couple of games in the beginning. But that's the, the, the style of receiver he is. That's what he brings to the table. And there's no one else that does that for the Chargers other than Jalen Guyton. Yeah, I mean, it's still not a room that thrives with speed. You know, three of the top four guys, are basically all of the top four guys are four or five guys or yeah. slower than that, right. right? Even though we think Quentin Johnson plays faster than that. Still, I mean, I think you have to learn from your mistakes. I think it would be very hard to let him go. And I think there's a very specific reason to bring him back. Keep that depth. I know he doesn't play special teams. Still, it's important. You don't need him to be active on every game day, but you're going to probably need him at some point this season yeah. and need that element in your offense. But that's just one of the surprises. There are several guys who wouldn't be as much of a surprise, and we have a voicemail about that. Hey, this is Alan from San Diego. Um, I was wondering what you guys thought about potential players that could actually lose their roster spot altogether. You know, obviously, you never want to see anybody lose their job, but uh, with a really strong rookie class, I was wondering, yeah, what kind of players we were potentially going to lose their spot to some of these newer players that are coming on the roster. Let me know what you guys think. I think, David, when you look at this, it's going to play out more later on in the training camp. But there are a few guys we looked at and we're kind of thinking, hey, these guys have been on the roster in years past and could potentially be on the bubble going into this year. Yeah, I mean, I think the number one guy that comes to mind is a back of offensive lineman by the name of Brendan Hymas. I, I think he's the primary candidate when I think of guys that could potentially get cut or lose their job because, you know, the Chargers don't really trust him. And I think that's very clear. They'd rather call a timeout than put him on, on the field and make him play snaps. They just don't, you know, they don't trust him and they've had him in the system for several years. So I think if he does not greatly improve and also you, you factor in the Chargers bringing in another guy that plays that same type of kind of swing guard swing tackle position in Jordan McFadden that kind of turns that that heat up a little bit too for Hymas and I think also another guy uh, that you have to look at just because of lack of, of performance last year is tight end Trey McKitty and I think with Trey McKitty he's just a huge down year uh, I think the reason why it probably might not happen is just because there's not really anybody else that has that same kind of physical profile to be your blocking tight end but those are a couple of guys that I kind of identified as guys that could potentially lose their job heading, heading into this season. I think with Trey McKitty, if they add a veteran tight end, right, maybe a more blocking centric tight end at some point this offseason still, which is still a possibility, yeah. then his roster spot becomes in danger. Right now, it's Definitely. hard to see who would push him. Brandon Hymas, two years in, they haven't been willing to put him on the field. It's hard to know where he's going to be in year three. I would also throw in Xander Horvath. You know, if you're talking about guys who might get cut, you always look at the late round picks first. I don't see Max Duggan as a seventh round pick getting cut. Dean Leonard is an invaluable special teams player. Xander Horvath made his impact on special teams as well, but didn't really get used much after the early part of the season last year. And historically, Kellen Moore hasn't really used a fullback in a traditional sense. He's used extra tight ends. He's used offensive linemen in that role. He hasn't really used just guys like Xander Horvath. Can he find a role for an uber athlete, the most athletic fullback we've ever seen? I know a lot of Chargers fans hope that he can, but that we do have more to get into, including why these spots at the end of the roster are so important and why you will need other guys to step up like the Jamari Sawyers in years past 
or Morgan Fox of last year, and so many other guys have stepped up before, and also why the new three-quarterback rule isn't really going to help the Chargers in the way that you think it is coming up after this. But I do need to tell you guys first about the one person who's always, uh, the one thing that's always making the roster, and that is Built Bar, the favorite protein bar. Every different flavor makes my initial 53 bar roster for sure. But Built Bar is the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. And it's so nice to have something that has flavors like cinnamon churro puff, double chocolate, coconut puff, peanut butter brownie. And that's what sets Built Bar apart from other protein bars for me is just so much variety, so many different good flavors. I mean, usually with protein bars, you'll find maybe one you like, and that one even might still be waxy or chalky. With Built Bar, you get a ton of delicious flavors, and you're getting something that's 100% covered in real dark chocolate and soft and easy to chew, and they'll fit on your diet. Most bars only have 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar with a whopping 17 grams of protein. These are the protein bar that are the unicorn of the food kingdom because you can have something that tastes good, break up the monotony of your diet, and get something that's healthy as well. But right now, guys, you can go to your nearest Walmart and pick up a four-bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate, coconut puff, or go to your nearest Sam's Club and pick up a 13-bar box. Just get it all out of the way with hit flavors like brownie batter and churro. You can thank us later. But you can still go to BuiltBar.com since you listen to this show and save 15% off your next order when you use the promo code LOCKEDON15 to get 15% off your next order. We have more great fan questions here, and we wanted to do this because last week we had to miss Friday's show, and fortunately, and today we wanted to make it up and do another fan show since we weren't able to get that out instead of taking Memorial Day off this week. So we wanted to get into that, but that's just on today's show. We actually had a question that was so good from Boltergeist that it's not going to make it on today's show because it's going to be all of tomorrow's show. The everydayers already know we'll be back here tomorrow, and tomorrow we're going into hypothetically what it would take for Quentin Johnston or Tuli Tuli Pulo to, or even Dayon Henley to come and be a rookie of the year next year and take over and what impact that would have if any of those three guys just absolutely breaks out as a rookie. Very, very excited about that, but also very excited about the other questions we have today, including from one of our favorites. Let's hear what Atir has for us this week. Dan, David, I want to talk about 53-man roster. Number two and number three are very critical to our success. The difference between winning a Super Bowl and just a playoff team is number two and number three. How important these teams players for us this year? Please let me know. I also sent message on Twitter. Love you. Atir, we love you, as always. I, I mean, and we talked with Atir, and what he means by this is, how important the second and third string players are to going and being able to make a run because of all the injuries that happened during the season. And last year, David, I mean, it's hard to need more examples than what you got. I mean, you got Jamari yeah. Sawyer, who basically saved the season at left tackle. Yeah. You have a Lohi Gilman that came in for a struggling Nazir Adderley and also filled in with Derwin James admirably. You have Morgan Fox after the Jerry Tillery release coming in, taking that starting spot and having the role he had. I mean, even Michael Davis wasn't a starter to start last season. So, yeah, I think it's here you could say the second and third players on these depth charts are very, very important. These roster spots are all very, very important. I think that's a great point. Yes, they're extremely important, and I think you look at what the Chargers focused on this year, and it was kind of correcting some of those roster issues from last year. The wide receiver room was a major problem last year after the injuries that they suffered. They went out and they spent premium draft resources on adding to that position group. They spent a first round pick on Quentin Johnston and they bring in Darius Davis in the fourth round, even though he is more slated to be a special teams player. I'm sure he will make his appearances on offense from time to time, but all of the sudden that room looks a whole lot better. They had some issues on defense on the edge group. When Joey Bosa went down, now they bring in, they spend a second round pick on Tuli Tui Pelotu and they add a guy who had some great, crazy production, 13 and a half sacks into that room to add to learn from Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa. And then <clears throat> I think the one room that gives you some pause and also I was going to say is the, the linebacker room even looks a little bit better when you bring in De Deion Henley and Eric Kendricks just because of that uncertainty on what's going to happen with Kenneth Murray Jr. But I think the biggest issue and the still the position group that gives me some pause and then we've been talking about it all off season it's just that safety room i think they've missed an opportunity up to this point 
to not add a veteran to that room to give yourself just a little bit of a better feeling in that room. But I feel like the Chargers did learn mostly from their mistakes, and they did add some quality depth. And yes, Adir, the depth is the difference between good football teams and great football teams, the ones that are there at the end. Absolutely, and I think what you saw last year, not only guys step up and help charge the Chargers make a playoff run and save their season, but you also saw how much that wide receiver room in particular and that edge rusher room and the pass rusher lack thereof were yeah. impacted by the loss of the guys Massively. in front of them, right? Especially the receiver room. It was a totally different offense if you lost either Keenan or Mike Williams oh, last yeah. year. That's why Quentin Johnston is so exciting or one of the many reasons. But we have another question about Weston who is asking something about, you know, a lot of people are asking, which is the new third emergency quarterback room for the NFL. Fortunately, I don't think it's going to change much for the Chargers. Hey, Dan, David, Weston here from Minnesota. Got two questions again here for you today. With the jersey schedule release coming out soon, uh, let me know what your guys' personal favorite uh, jerseys are. I'm a big fan of the Royal ones myself. Excited for those. And two, thank God for the emergency quarterback spot. Did you guys see that? Talk about that a little bit so we don't have to worry about rostering Max Duggan. All right, thanks, guys. Bolt up. Then I hate to be the one that has to be here and break your heart like this. But (laughs) the problem with the new rule for the new third quarterback rule is the player still has to be on the roster. So basically what it means is on game day, you can have a third emergency quarterback that's already on the roster, not on the practice squad. You can't elevate somebody for the game and have them be that, you know, third quarterback option. Yeah. Basically, all it is is the third quarterback that you don't have active on game day can come in if both of your first two quarterbacks are too injured to play. Once one of those guys is healthy enough to come back in and play, the third emergency quarterback has to revert to a role where they can't come back on the field. So likely, yeah. David, we're still going to see three quarterbacks with the Chargers roster this year. But as far as uniforms go, I'm excited to see if we potentially can see soon that Navy helmet with the Navy jerseys. I love the Royal Color, Color Rush original ones. Powder blue always for me is going to be great. Powder blue with the white I like more than powder blue with the yellow. But that's the one I'm most excited to see. If we can get that dark blue helmet, the LT days, the Drew Brees, Philip Rivers days, that's the one I'd like to see. But Max Duggan might be wearing them too. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Shout out to Weston. I got got the royal uh, blue hat on here for you, man. I love that jersey too. But if if I have to pick my favorite, it's probably honestly the new whites. The new whites with the yellow and the blue trims on them. I mean, those are super, super clean. White on white or white on yellow? Yeah, the white on yellow. Yeah, the, mm. the white on yellow, I think, is the, the combination that I like. But, I mean, you can't go wrong with the best-looking jerseys in all of professional sports. And I'm going to go to my grave saying that. I think there's no question about that. But, yeah, as far as the third QB role, um, yeah, he doesn't have to be part of the 46 players that you're allowed to activate and dress um, on game day. Um, but he does still have to be part of the 53-man roster. So, um, I think it's good. It's good for the game, just so we don't see another wide receiver that that's trying to attempt to play quarterback or you bring in a quarterback that is clearly hurt that can't throw the football at all and then you just hand the ball off a million times and and you get a really really sour end to what was going to be a very exciting football game but yeah uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be interesting. I, I, I mean, I think that's where the Chargers can take things to the next level is to see how creative they can get with the helmets and, and some of those things they can do with that. Yeah, I mean, it's a great starting point. They have the best jerseys ever. So let's go to another question here quickly. Let's get Lewis Benzman, one of the best question askers, you know, consistently and every day or for sure. Yes, the character of Chargers players are always A+. plus. Some other teams have taken risks and drafted players like Jalen Carter or Ndamukong Sue back in the day or guys like that who can still pan out. Are we potentially missing out on some good players, but simply ruling these guys, or by simply ruling these guys out? David, quickly, what do you think? Absolutely, yes. I mean, yeah, the, the Chargers are definitely, uh, you know, losing out on some potential opportunities for some guys to come in that are maybe a little rough around the edges, but that's how the Chargers do business. They just, they if they see anything that could be an off-field issue or anything in their past that is questionable in nature, they're just not going to bring them in. That's how they have been the last 30 years that I've been a Charger fan. I just don't see that changing anytime soon. Yeah, one, I mean, they're absolutely missing out on some talent, right? That's for yeah. sure. Like, they, they aren't taking the chance, and I'm sure they've missed out on more, more talent to potentially roster than they could have had. But they also have the longest streak of players not getting arrested. It's over there six years at this point. They're the only team that's, you know, over six at this point. And it makes a difference. You want to know how I know? 
Look at the Las Vegas Raiders, right? I mean, you literally have multiple first-round picks for them that have ended up getting arrested and going to jail. You have the tragic Henry Rugg situation, right? That's a first-round pick. But more importantly, that's a dude, you know, made the mistake of his life. Yeah. And you have guys like Damon Arnett who got, you know, released after showing guns on social media. Like, those are the things that don't happen to the Chargers. Those right. are the headlines you don't see for the Chargers. Exactly. So those are the, the parts that are really, really important. Here's the other thing, David. You don't have to worry about the guy you're rooting for. You don't have to worry about, oh, my God, I have to root for Deshaun Watson on Sundays because I'm a right. Cleveland Browns fan, right? Yeah. There is something to that. You don't have to root for Alden Smiths of the world or the Greg Hardys, right? Like, right. you get to feel good about the players that you root for. And as a fan, I think that's something that you shouldn't take for granted because it, it, it doesn't always end up that way. And there's multiple cases throughout the league where it would be pretty hard if one of those players came to the Chargers It'd be pretty hard to root for them knowing, you know, what they potentially have in their past or off the field. So don't take that for granted. You get to really be happy and feel like, you know, not only are they good players potentially on the Chargers, but mostly I feel like you feel like they're good people too, yeah. you know, and, and that's something that you're not seeing a lot of off-field concerns for the Chargers because of how much due diligence they put into that. But that's right. we do have more fan mail questions to get into, including if the Chargers or how surprised we'd be if the Chargers found a way to sweep the Chiefs in 2023. Spoiler alert. I'd be very, very surprised. But I also want to get into the Chargers potentially flying under the radar this year and not being talked about as much and why that actually might be a good thing for the team coming up right after this. We have more great questions to get into. Thank you to everyone who hit us up at Locked On LAC. Thank you to everyone who put your questions in the YouTube comments or called into the voicemail line at 323-524-7924 for this Chargers mailbag. Appreciate the fact that we're able to get back and do this specific show and get you guys' questions on because you guys had some really good questions, not just this week, but last week and the last couple of times we've tried to do this and it's fallen through. So thank you guys for participating. As always, your participation means so much to us and you being everydayers really just makes our day pretty much every thank day. You. So thank you guys. And let's get to what you have questions wise, because we had some good ones here, including from Bolt Wheat, who says, knowing that David is the eternal optimist and Daniel, not so much. Pessimistic is too strong of a word. I think that's a great, you know, way to put it, Bolt Wheat. How surprised would you guys be if the Bolts swept the Chiefs to win the division? David, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, as much as I would love my optimistic side to take over and just say, and I wouldn't be surprised at all, it would be great. The fact of the matter is this. The Chargers have not beaten the Chiefs twice in a row since 2012 and 2013, okay? So that is over a decade since the last time they have done that. The air of dominance has been very clear with the Chiefs. They've been very, very good. They've been very hard to beat. However, the Chargers, and I've said it many times, I will say it again, the Chargers play them tougher than anybody else in the NFL. I do believe they are capable of doing it. I just have to see it before I can just completely, you know, put my hat in the ring and say it's going to happen. They can do it. I just got to see it before I'll believe it. It feels like one win, like on any given Sunday, that wouldn't surprise me, right? Like right. it would surprise me in the moment just because there's almost no chance I'm picking the Chargers to win that game because right. I have a very much a prove it mentality for me yes. going in. That being said, every single game since Patrick Mahomes has, has taken over that the Chiefs have beat the Chargers has been within six points, right? Every game on every both sides, one. every win. I mean, the Chargers only won, but every win, or, you know, since Brand Staley and Justin Herbert, at least, Phillip Rivers did yeah. get him once 2018. This is the hard thing. Even with all those close games, Staley and Herbert have only beaten Mahomes once, right? Yeah. I mean, they have one win against a backup quarterback, but that doesn't really count. No, I mean, one's against Chad Henney. You don't. It doesn't count the same. It doesn't carry the same kind of weight. Nah. Where the Chiefs actually, you know, sat their starters in the final game of the year. Who would have thought about that? <laughs> but they haven't swept the Chiefs like you said since 2013, which was Alex Smith's first season as the Chiefs' quarterback. You can remember yeah. way back then, mm. and. Only three total wins against since the Chiefs yeah. since 2014. Oof. Disgusting. This is going to be the 10th season, guys. And we're talking about three wins. Like, that is atrocious. It's a business. Can they do it? Absolutely. Am I going to say they're going to do it? Absolutely not. Prove nah. it to me. <laughs> Show me you can do it. It would be a major surprise if the Chargers found a way to sweep the Chiefs love it. and go it. win this Please division. Do but it doesn't feel like it's out of the question that they pull off one of these games. I think that's more, no. more than doable because they've been right there so many times. Wouldn't surprise me if a bounce goes the other way this season because we've seen that happen before. But let's get to another one here. A good question that we have from Colby Talbert, another everyday who always asking great questions. Everything considered, and all goes well this year, if we lose offensive Kellen Moore, who takes the helm? 
David, it seems like the Chargers made a very specific hire. We didn't even really talk about this before the show, but that would make the most sense to take over if Kellen Moore does take a head coaching job after a, you know, a tremendous season offensively for the Chargers. Yeah, I mean, to me, I mean, the person that makes the most sense would be the guy that came to L.A. with Kellen Moore from Dallas. And, of course, that's the quarterback's coach, Doug Neusmeyer, a guy that will be with Kellen Moore orchestrating and 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 trying to build out this offense. Yeah with uh you know with the chargers and with justin herbert and is going to be there hopefully every step of the way absorbing everything and and being right there and you know if that happens and kellen moore does get an opportunity to be a head coach somewhere the natural transition to me seems like is doug newsmeyer yeah doug newsmeyer has been with kellen moore in some capacity since 2018 he's been the quarterback coach under moore since 2020 also gets you know some of the same credit that kellen moore does with Dak Prescott's breakout, right? Quarterback yeah. coach for most of Dak Prescott's best seasons with Doug, ne- Doug Neusmeyer. So I think that that is probably the plan. That would seem to be the plan. Yeah. If this is happening, the obvious offense that Kellen Moore is running is obviously working super well. Yeah. The most ready and capable person to take that would be Doug Neusmeyer in this situation. Yeah. It seems like that is easily the most likely scenario. And I think smart planning by the Chargers to bring it in someone so Very. familiar with that offense in case things do pop off because yes. Moore's already gotten interviewed for multiple head coaching jobs in the past. So no doubt. I do want to talk about one thing though, which is the Chargers not getting a ton of media hype like we saw last year after the big off season. And Zach's fed up with it, frankly. Hey guys, it's Zach here. So have you noticed that in terms of sports media and the coverage of our team, it seems like nobody in sports media wants to ever talk about this team. It seems like they are being kind of forced to, but you could verbally hear the groans whenever they do. And I just want to know if you notice it as much as I have. Love to know your answer and go Chargers. David, I mean, it seems to me like most media out analysts probably feel the way I feel about like calling Kenneth Murray, you know, the, the breakout player of the season where it's like, I've just been burned too many times. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you sure. know, and there, there's obvious buyer's remorse last year when so many people seem to be like it made me almost uncomfortable how many people were believing in the Chargers last year. This is it. This is the tipping point. The big off season, winning free agency, winning the off season. Yeah, I I think it's almost better, David, that the Chargers are flying a little bit under the radar this year as opposed to last year. Yeah, so I will agree with that point. Uh, I do uh, uh, honestly like the fact that they are flying under the radar, though they don't have all the same crazy expectations that they had last year because, you know, that's that's better. I, I think there's just less pressure in that situation. But well, also, David, it feels like back in the day, right, like the 2006s, right, like this yeah. was what we were always saying, like yeah. pay attention to the Chargers, East Coast bias, right? That right. was always yeah, the definitely. thing, like East Coast bias. You want to talk Cowboys and Giants and all that yeah. stuff. But we were like, talk about the Chargers, right? But they always were kind of flying under the radar, seemingly. And those were the best days the Chargers have had in the 21st century, basically. You're right. But also, my second point is, is guess who doesn't have a problem with talking about the Chargers or featuring the Chargers? The NFL. Because they're one of four teams that have six primetime games next season. Sure. So... I'm honestly not that concerned about it. The NFL knows that they have a young superstar quarterback and Justin Herbert and an exciting Chargers offense and a Chargers team that they want to feature. And that's clear because they're one of four teams with six primetime games. So I wouldn't be too concerned yeah. about it. No, that's totally different, though, to me. I mean, having people and turning TV shows on and turning ESPN on and having the pundits that talk about all the national things talking about your team is different. You turn on sure. shows. And you want to be acknowledged. You want to be recognized. You want to be told that your team has a chance, that your team is one of the players, that your team is a contender, right? That's what you want to hear as a fan. You don't want them talking consistently about the Jets and Aaron Rodgers or the Cowboys without Kellen Moore, right? Right. You want them to talk about and hold your team in the regards of teams that do it over and over again. Of course. So go do it over and over again, though. That's the thing, right? I'm right there with you. They made the playoffs one time last year and had a historic playoff loss. Like they have to go earn it from the the people who I'm sure in the past 
have always picked the Chargers as that sexy dark horse team. Yeah, yeah. If you if they want to be talked about, they got to go win. I mean, that's really yeah. as simple as that. And then they got that's win how in you the become playoffs. That. Like yeah. if you're consistently in the playoffs, they can't help but talk about you. Then you become right. they the can't Bills, you. who still yeah. have never won a Super Bowl. Right? They're not having right. any problems. But what they do is they go out and consistently win year in and year out. They don't have five and eleven seasons. Right? They don't have four and twelve seasons like the Chargers have that's had. It? After a couple of good years, consistent winning the Chargers have won two years in a row winning record under Brandon Staley should have been better. Sure. You could say that still win consistently and then you'll get talked about like the other teams that you want are talked about. You may never get talked about as much as the Cowboys and the Jets, but they will always have to bring your team up in the conversations about the things that matter. And I think that's yep. what all Chargers fans want in the end. But thank you to everyone who checked out today's show. Make sure you guys are back here tomorrow for another great question we couldn't get in today, which is. Which of the Chargers rookies could potentially have that breakout offensive or defensive rookie of the year season? And what impact could that have on the Chargers? Not just next year, but going forward at some premium positions. So we're going to talk about the first three rounds tomorrow and get into more mailbag stuff probably later in the week for you guys to keep you involved during this offseason with a lot going on, of course. But thank you guys for checking out today's show. And make sure you never miss shows like today. Go subscribe or follow for free on YouTube and listen wherever you get your podcast from. You can also find the show every day on all of our social media. So follow us. If you don't already, to make sure you don't miss it, you can follow me on Twitter at Dan Talk Sports and David Drogmeyer on Twitter at DrotalkSD, as well as the show's page at Locked On LAC. You can also find us on Instagram at Locked On Chargers and our Locked On Chargers Facebook page. If you guys want to get your voicemail in, call in to 323 524 7924, leave a 30 second Chargers question, and it's likely to get on the show. We try to use as many of those as we possibly can. We love the ones that we got on today's show, but we'll be back with you guys tomorrow with some offensive and defensive rookie of the year candidates on the Chargers. But until then, Take it easy and go Bolts.